Okay, what do we have to do every year to get the food truck inspected? We're really lucky. So George Cox Automotive, um, I think they've been around for a long time. So we purchased our used food truck from Smoky Denmark, which is a company in East Austin. And our food truck is like 27 years old. So they have been working on this truck before we even got the truck. And like, so they have like, you know, they have some, they have a relationship with our truck, which is helpful because it's old as shit. And like, I don't know if it's gonna always pass all of yeah. these emissions tests. Basically like a food truck is like an RV and a kitchen at the same time. So like, I remember when we first got the truck, man, the, um, the tire, like we, the first week we got the truck, like the, one of the old tires like blew out. And I remember Nathan and I being super freaked out, trying to change it. Obviously, like we had just spent all of our all of our money on this old ass vehicle, and uh, we like struggled to change the tire. And I remember actually we called at one point we called AAA and they showed up and the guy changed our food truck tire for us. That was a that was a small miracle. You have to go to now since COVID. You have to go to the Health and Human Services Department to make a appointment. Um, I think you can actually call also to make an appointment, which they're hard to get a hold of sometimes. But you have to make an appointment to then bring your paperwork in. So you fill out the online on the City of Austin Health and Human Resources, or like I think it's Health and Human Services website. There is a mobile vending application you have to fill it out every year no matter what you know if you've been permitted one time or ten times you still have to fill it out it has all of like ownership information so you're gonna want to make sure you have all of the contact information address driver's license info for all of the ownership VIN numbers all of the vehicle information then it asks in the application it also asks you about your commissary kitchen so you want to have access to all of that information you have to get that uh, notarized so you have to get the person that is operating or owns your commissary kitchen to get that notarized i guess through a notary we're lucky that the, the woman that runs the kitchen is a notary so that played out well but that was a whole thing for a while your commissary kitchen has to be a certified prep facility so a cpf so it just can't just be anything it has to be like certified with the city of Austin to be a, so it's approved that food trucks can work out of that facility. So those are two things you have to have. You also have to say, and then within that page, you also have to document your commissary schedule. So basically they want to know that your truck is dumping the gray water and that you're doing all of your prep. Not, you know, you're not really supposed to be doing a lot of prep on your truck. You're supposed to be doing it at a facility. You also have to have a bathroom agreement. So, you know, call, Paul and Patrick signed our bathroom agreement. You also, if you have like mobile, like for example, if you're more of like a mobile unit that travels all the time, you also can get like a porta potty company to certify that. I think that's kind of complicated. I mean, so that, that paperwork's just time consuming. It's not a whole lot of work is what once you have all that information, you put that together. So you take that in. So you make an appointment to take all that paperwork in at that time. They go through all your paperwork, make sure you have everything you need. Oh, one more thing. You have to make sure you have a, like a health certificate, like you're a certified food manager. So you have to have a specific certified food manager certificate accessible at both locations. So for example, Evan is our certified food manager dedicated at the truck. And then Brad is our certified food manager at our commissary. So you have to have that information as well. Okay, so you go, and they've changed it up all the time. You go down to city of Austin, you check in. At this point, you have to like wait till your appointment. You used to kind of like be able to go and wait in the waiting room, but now they won't even let you in the building till like your appointment time. Uh, but you want to be on time because if you are not on time, then you'll miss your appointment. They basically approve all your paperwork, hopefully. Every time I go in there, there's always like a lot of people that are very confused. At this point, I've done it a couple times. So you get your approval and then you make an appointment to bring your actual unit to the health department. 
So like right now we're waiting to pick up our truck. If you have a tandem barbecue trailer, you also have to bring that to be approved as well. And then we can talk about all that. So in addition to that, you have to have plates that are current. So for example, every year, if you have a trailer, normally if you have a legitimate trailer, that's just gonna, it's gonna be easy to register. So hopefully they'll just send you plates. If it's a handmade trailer, that becomes, that's a little bit more complicated. But you have to, because our truck is a vehicle, we have to bring it in and get someone to do our vehicular inspection annually. And that kind of lines up with our other inspection, which kind of works out. So like we get our vehicular inspection in January every year, and then we have to renew our mobile vending permit by the end of February, early March. I also would always recommend making sure you have plenty of extra time to do this because I mean, it's always kind of a shit show. Yeah. Like, You'd be surprised. There's always something, something always comes up. They want to make sure that you have, you know, plates that match your permit. Like, because I mean, I think there's also people that manipulate the system and like switch around like the vehicles with different permits. So that's a big thing. They want to make sure that have the right size clean water and gray water tanks. I think that's like big big priority. The first time you come in. They want to make sure that you're you have a generator or access to uh, mobile power. After your initial inspection, you don't have to have a power source, which is quite convenient because it's always a pain in the ass to try to make, you know, to figure that out. If you don't have a generator on board, and our generator is really old and sucks. But yeah, so I don't know why that rule exists, but it's, I'm grateful that it does currently. They want to make sure that you have hot water. They want to make sure that you have like the food, to, like you can hold food hot and cold. You got to make sure that your fridge will operate and hold food under 40 degrees and then your hot food will be over 140. I mean, there's so much shit. Yeah, to get your vehicular inspection, you have to have uh, vehicle insurance and then generally you have to have liability insurance like if you're gonna take your truck anywhere and park it normally they want you to have liability insurance also at your commissary you need liability insurance but yeah to begin with all to, to, before the beginning of the process that's what you do first so what did the inspector just come and look for so he looked for specifically tank size. So we have a larger gray water tank than we do a fresh water tank. We also wanted to see the valves to put in the gray water, or no, sorry, to put in the fresh water and release the gray water. He, uh, what else do you look for? Those are the main things. We also, you know, kind of check for all of our, um, See if we have a pump and a hot yeah, water heater. Yeah, pump and hot water heater. We don't have propane on our truck. So that means we don't have to go through a fire inspection. If we did have propane on our truck, like most people do, uh, you also have to go uh, through a, another inspection with the uh, fire marshal or the fire department. Um, so yeah, that actually works out for us. Uh, he also looked at our pit um, to make sure that, you know, we have screens. There's no like gaping holes. Everything's clean, organized. There's not a lot of like prep. There's not a prep table. There's not any other shit in there. Uh, also, normally they check and make sure that there's um, fire extinguishers and they're current. So make sure you get a good fire extinguisher guy. But yeah, that's it. Obviously we're going through the city of Austin uh, mobile inspection process. All, different cities and counties all have different rules. So if you're in California or you're in Colorado or you're in Houston, it's all going to be very different. Um, so make sure you take the time to research the you know laws and rules and the process in your area before you get too invested. I know like I know in some some counties there's not a, a lot of food trucks because they really don't like to encourage it happening. Austin specifically is very food truck friendly. You know Portland's very food truck friendly. Um, there's some like places that are notorious for having a lot of food trucks, and most of that is because um, you know real estate's so expensive. It's a great way for the city to kind of promote small business and, um, you know, welcome a lot of different types of food. So, yeah, make sure you, you know, you research what you're doing before you, you get too involved with any of it. Bulls 
like a dream. Pull the little right, because obviously that's where the cookers are. So you gotta, gotta compensate for that. But yeah, keep it under 55 and keep it straight. <laughs> okay, did we pass? Yeah, we, pa we passed with flying colors. We did yeah. great. Yeah. Very what's, proud of us. When's the next time we have to come back? We have to come back in one year. Like, obviously, so in like 11 months, we start the process. Actually, probably a little bit before that, just to make sure we have enough time to get it all done. But yeah. Remember the time that we did, it was like our first corporate event, and it was like such a big fucking deal. And we were in downtown Austin at the Sunset Room, which is like kind of a, it's like a swanky minimalist, um, like event venue and it was me and you you drove the truck downtown and we're sitting downtown waiting to move the truck into like the spot where it was supposed to be for the event um, and the lady that was doing the event was like kind of uptight and like just stressed out obviously this was like her first time to do something big like this too and the truck died on the street right in front of the venue uh, oh man so we like we kind of like distracted the lady and the, our whole team like everyone like all of our servers that were like there to do the event pushed the truck in downtown like five o'clock traffic around the building to the back of the event venue where it was like supposed to like be for service and the shitty part of it is it like we didn't even like need the food truck it was more of like a prop and like people love the food truck prop like we get so many people reach out and are like I all I want is a food truck for my wedding which I get it but like it's not super practical um but man especially when you have such an old truck it's just nice to have it like sit there and look pretty and be a service vehicle but but yeah I will I will never forget that we had to like get it towed the next day we had to make sure that it was like not gonna be like no one was gonna mess with it overnight in that spot downtown in like a random ass alley. And then I, I think we had to be closed for like four days to get the truck fixed. But <laughs> man, I'll never forget that.